Hey, and welcome to another episode of Motors and Meats. Today, it's all about suspension. I'm changing out my stock shocks for Bilstein B8s. I already have H&R lowering springs, so the B8s are gonna complement that lower ride height. Stick around. I got back home from my big road trip from the Rockies to the Smokies, which if you haven't seen that, you need to go check out that video. I got back home the next morning. I woke up, came out to the car and there was a puddle of oil around the front driver's side wheel. And I was like, that's a strange place for some oil to be right. So I took off down the road and every bump I would hit, the steering wheel would just shudder. I'm glad I got home from the trip before it happened, but it gave me the opportunity to go ahead and make another improvement on the car. So with the lowering springs, that reduces the amount of travel in the suspension. And the stock suspension is designed for the full amount of travel. Well, the Bilstein B8 is designed specifically for this car with the lowering springs. It has that lesser amount of travel. So we're gonna take off the old stuff, put on the new stuff and take it around and, and see how that does. With the wheel off, the next thing we need to do is take off this caliper and I need to get something to hang it with like some rope or whatever so that we don't put any strain on the brake lines. You can see while we're under here how oily everything is from this shock that's blown out. It made a really big mess and then of course the stain that it left on my concrete that I haven't yet gotten fully absorbed. What a mess. All right, so with the caliper removed and just hanging here by some rope so that we don't put any strain on this. Next, we need to remove this bolt here this nut that holds on the sway bar drop link and the bottom of the strut tower shaft thing itself. With that bolt removed, this should be able to drop out now. So now we move underneath the trunk. So we're going to pop off these plastic covers and underneath that there'll be three bolts. All right, so the old shock is out. You can see my H&R lowering springs. The, old, the end of this thing rests down in this hole here and you have to take loose uh, the bolt or the nut that goes through this piece from underneath, which means you also have to take loose this body panel. Once you get that body panel off, you can put a 17 on this side or an 18 on that side and turn it till it comes loose. And then it, you don't have to take it out, just take it loose and then that arm will be able to swing down. And once this pivots down low enough for those three bolts to come out, it'll come out and then you can just kind of compress it a little bit and then swing it out past your fender and it's all good. So we finished up with our front shocks. We're moving on to the back. That means we have to climb into the cramped back seat and remove this carpet so we can get to where the top mounts attach. Next up, we've got this supported with this jack. And while it's supported, we're going to come in and release those three nuts that are on top of the strut tower. And then after that, we'll begin to lower everything down. We may have to take something else off. We'll pick that up in a moment. Well, one way to go through a lot of laundry is to try to do work like this in the Mississippi heat. It's 95 degrees today with a heat index of 103. So uh, yeah, this is my fourth shirt, I think. Anyway, it's looking good. I have one left to do. And here's what we have so far on this guy here, new Bill Steen previously installed H&R lowering springs. Everything's back together. So we'll do a quick time lapse of the other side so you can see the whole thing and then we'll go take a drive.
<laughs> well, that's the job done. So I'm disgusting, obviously. Look at this. Uh, one thing that I could just definitely impress upon you is that the sooner you acknowledge the fact that you're going to get disgusting doing a job like this, the faster you're going to move. Don't worry about trying to keep yourself clean. There's a shower for that. So I'm going to go take a shower, put these wheels back on, drop the car off the jack stands, and then let's see what the B8s can do. First impression, going through a rough parking lot back there, I could feel every little bump. So noticeably stiffer than what it was, even though the spring situation is the exact same as it was before I changed out my shocks. Now, I am coming off of driving for about a hundred miles worth with the bad shocks, one completely blown, and then the one over here on this end, in this corner, was oily like it was probably on its way out. I had noticed as well that the gap between the top of the tire and the fender was different on the left than it was on the right back in the back of the car. So probably something to do with that shock going out. Another thing I've noticed, let's get a good downshift. The squat doesn't really happen now. It stays level. And then same thing on braking. It doesn't nosedive near as badly. Oh, this is great. I cannot wait to get this back out onto the track or the tail of the dragon or something where I can really test it. So far, my good curvy road seems just wonderful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this road is not bumpy really at all, but it's not a perfect road surface either. So it does have a few dips and bumps in it and I'm just really not noticing any discomfort or anything. One of the things I love about a 911 is how you can accelerate towards a corner and if it's not one that's sharp enough to warrant braking, you can just lift the throttle right before turning in and it will just dive right in and it feels very, very sharp right now. So to really test its capabilities, I'm gonna need to go back to the track and have another track day, which that doesn't bother me at all. So <laughs> there's a rough bridge coming up here in about four seconds. I want to see what this feels like. Handled it well. Before I changed out to my lowering springs, I used to bottom out on that bridge. So now with the lowering springs, it's stiffer and I haven't bottomed out any at all since I've had the lowering springs. Trying to think of something negative, um, it's not like driving a Cadillac, but I guess it shouldn't be. The stock shocks were on this car whenever I bought it, and it was at 105,000 miles, now it's at 141,000 miles, and 15,000 of that was with the lowering springs. So I don't know how old the shocks were, but for them to wait until now to go out, I feel like they survived fine. I hear a lot of people say, can you put lowering springs without putting B8s or some other shocks that are meant for lowering springs? And short answer, yes. It's just, you know, it's not really designed for that, but it works. But now we have the right thing. We have the B8s on here and I'm looking forward to my next twisty road. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Love to have you around, and I appreciate you checking out this video, and we'll see you next time.